You're watching the Unfair Advantage Experience. I'll be talking with Jack Brewer, former National Football League player, three-time captain, entrepreneur, and man of God. We'll be discussing Jack's journey from the football field to the mission field, as well as his personal mission to serve the community through the Jack Brewer Foundation and the Servant Ministries. We'll touch on his foundation works to address one of our nation's most pressing issues. We'll also learn some of Jack's challenges that he's faced and how he overcame them. Stay tuned. Come to a place where the lost are found. This is the Unfair Advantage. Welcome to the Unfair Advantage Experience with your host, Robbie Eddy. Join us as we share and discuss real life stories with individuals who have experienced the Unfair Advantage. Today on the Unfair Advantage Experience, I'm talking to Jack Brewer, a former NFL player and a true leader in the kingdom. Man, Jack, I just want to thank you for coming on the show, man. And I just, I want to talk about, you know, your whole journey in, uh, in, the, in, in the football league, man. Yeah, man, Robbie, you know, first off, it's an honor to be here, brother. Yeah, man. Just watching what you do and what this ministry does, touching so many people, uh, keeping it real. Uh, I just want to tell you uh, my gratitude uh, for that. You know, football was a blessing for God, from God for me. Yeah. You know, I, uh, I grew up uh, in Grapevine, Texas, man, and humble beginnings. Yeah. You know, nobody in my family went to college or anything, you know. So for me, it was living my dream, and it yeah. gave me the chance to do that, you know? Uh, I watched so many of my big cousins and family members who were quite frankly a lot more talented than me. But all of them would either get a scholarship or not qualify for a scholarship. And so um, it was a lot of disappointment, to be honest with you, as I grew up. You know, you're watching your big cousin. It's like your mentor. It's like the person you want to be like. You watch him score all these touchdowns in high school. But then in college, you know, after first semester, they're back on the corner drinking. Man. Or, you know, and it's, it's uh, there was a lot of disappointment. And so for me, that fueled me. You know, and my mom kept me in church, man. Man. Wow. All my life, man, I was uh, started playing the drums at seven. I was a choir director at 11, and, you know, and I think those are the things that kind of got me through that part of my life was yeah. just all that prayer around me. Yeah. Um, and I went on, and I had an amazing, amazing career in, in high school. I won a state championship, led my team to 15 and 0. Um, I was an all-state player, awesome. had 41 Division One scholarship offers, you know. Um, but it wasn't all peaches and cream, you know. I, I grew up in a time um, in my in my town where I had to deal with a lot of racism, man. I had the KKK came and had a rally in my town. I mean, I dealt with skinheads, so you know, fighting and trying to you know stay out of trouble, yeah. but at the same time yeah. do what I knew God had called me to do, uh, and use football as as my vehicle to do that. And so, you know, I got a got the opportunity to go play. Played uh, in the Big Ten. You know, I was academic all Big Ten. I always kept my grades uh, really really good. And I actually graduated with my master's degree uh, before I went to the NFL uh, and went on to, um, you know, I would call it a successful career. I wasn't a pro bowler, but I was close um, on special teams and I was a captain on three teams. <laughs> so uh, God bless me, man. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I, I got away from God as I got into the NFL. I think, you know, start start chasing women, yeah. fighting that sex addiction. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, that was really the thing that uh, for me, I had to overcome yeah. uh, and really get back to my roots. And uh, I think that's why I'm here. Yeah, man. You know, um, I relate so much to you because I played I played football, man. And it was um, I, obviously I didn't get to go as far as you did. But um, it was like I was an SLD student in school. Didn't do good in school, um, but football I was good at, man. So that was like my, man, I, I remember those feelings. Two days, I was like the one kid during summer, everybody would be slacking off. I'd be running with tires. I'd be dragging tires down the dirt road working out, and I'd come back, and I started varsity as a freshman, which is which is good. It's, unheard, it's unheard of for football. Yeah. Man. Ain't like it's baseball or tennis. Yeah, <laughs> man. So like I, I, like I know that passion and that yeah, feeling, man. and that's a lot, of, a lot of that discipline that I got from football has pertained in my life to these days, man, even into like becoming born again. But, you know, thinking about how, um, you know, all, 
all the bad stuff you get into, man. I know, you know, because it, it, it was a really powerful thing for me, but I also got involved in like steroids later on. So some, it took some bad parts of my life, but it was one of the most powerful things in my life. And when I didn't go play football because my parents couldn't afford the scholarship, I had a 75% uh, Division two school, Dana, Nebraska. I didn't go play ball. I didn't even know anything. And that's when my life went down. But when I've learned so much about you, I know you talk about like the father, there's children and there's like 18.5 million. You know, I want you to, to, uh, to, and how it's growing even more. I want you to expound on that for me, man, and how you feel with that in your ministry and everything. Yeah. Amen, man. And as you were talking, I was just, I started reflecting and God started speaking to me. You know, um, I think the boldness that you have, the boldness that I have. I don't know that we would have that, man, what, what, what I going through them trenches in them two days. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> straight yeah. up. You yeah, know, like yeah, straight yeah. up. It, lie, yeah. it does something different to you. It does. Your it, it, man. does. it does. And, and, and I think that's also what fuels my passion for the fatherless, man. And, um, man, God called me to this ministry. Yeah. And, like, when you, when you, you know, when you say the word fatherless, like, I get emotional, man. You know, you start talking about um, 18.5 million kids, man, that don't got a daddy or a father figure to, like, uplift them when they really need it. Yeah. I mean, you talk about uh, having things stacked against you, man. And, you know, it goes back to Scripture, man. I mean, the Word of God, throughout Scripture, the word fatherless. And, and I'll tell you all something if you don't really realize it. You know, we use the word orphan nowadays, right? Mm -hmm. But in the Bible, when the Bible was written in Bible times, being fatherless was an orphan. Mm -hmm. There's no difference. So there's no disrespect to moms and single moms. I mean, we got to have them, you know, but... You need a dad, man. man bro. The head of the household being removed means a piece of your soul is removed. That's right, bro. And so the only way you can rehabilitate from that is through the blood of Jesus. Amen, bro. And so um, for me, <laughs> there, there, amen, is no other, there is no other issue. That's right. Because if you look at that 18.5 million, if you look deeper, right, you look at education. Everyone talks about education, this and that. I'm one, and I would go on. I'd go in front of Congress and told them, until you put the Ten Commandments back in these schoolhouses, yeah, man. you can forget it. There is no curriculum that you're going to be able to instill that is going to put the character and morality back into these children until you get the Ten Commandments and make that your rule of law. Amen. And so... You see the education system, 71% of high school dropouts are fatherless. 71%. Think about how many people that is. That's two, there's 2.1 million, between 2.1, 2.2 million dropouts every year. So that's 1.7 million of those dropouts are fatherless. Dude. Then you look at our prison system. That's right. Right? Over 2 million men in prison. Yeah. And over 80% of those men have children. Yeah. So look at the massive amount of kids that we have in our in our nation, and it all goes back to fatherlessness. You're 20 times more likely to get in a run-in with cops if you're fatherless, <clears throat> right? You start looking at human trafficking. You see what's going on in our border. I just heard I was at with the the, the Florida Department of Juvenile Justice, and they just told us about a little two-year-old baby goes into an Airbnb here in Florida, touches some fentanyl and dies. Dang. So we got drugs now coming across our border. They're using little girls to do it. Yeah. What do you think the majority of them little girls are? They're fatherless. That's right, man. Because ain't no man going to let their daughter be, be trafficked. They going to go get them. That's right, man. And they gonna uphold people, they gonna protect them. And so I don't wanna, I don't even like using the word social justice, Amen. right? There's only one justice and that's biblical justice. That's right. And if you ain't standing for Jesus, yeah. I don't wanna hear you. I don't wanna hear you in the streets. <laughs> I don't wanna hear you uh, 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 with your picketing and riding and protesting and all yeah. that. Protest for the Lord. That's right, and until we get back to that, man, we got major issues, but we all can do more to help the fatherlessness issue in this nation. We we have the highest rate of fatherlessness than any country on earth. Man. And that's sickening, man. Dude, when, I, when I'm hearing you thinking, I'm talking about, I'm, I'm thinking about when you're talking like, uh, the you know, God is a God of multiplication. Amen. Amen. 
the devil is subtraction. Glory to the So when you when when I hear you talking, I can just think, and he's and he and he divides. God brings unity. So when I'm hearing you talk and thinking, and I get emotional too, just thinking about it, because I know, man, I you just see that the enemy. That's his way of causing subtraction. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's how he's bringing it down. That's the that's agenda. Right. And um, and, you know, there can be there can be demons, there can be devils, there can be witchcraft, there can be Jezebels, all that stuff in Bible studies right. and, and, and conferences and rooms. But there's one thing that they scatter and run to and that's the blood that is the cross the death burial and the resurrection the gospel so man I just feel led right now Glory to God. that you look to this camera and you pray for right. some fatherless people right now let's do it in the name of Jesus you know Father God your word in Malachi 4 and 6 the last verse of the Old Testament says he will turn the hearts of the fathers yeah. to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers and it came with a promise Father God you said lest I will smite the earth with the curse, Father God. The God, we come to you right now humbly, Father God. Your word tells us to come on our knees, to God. Yes. Repent for our evil ways, Father God, yes. and turn our face back to you, Father God. And right now I ask that whoever's watching this, Father yes, God, Lord. that not just take care of their own children, Father God, but that we as a nation, Father God, as a world, Father God, start loving children that are not ours as if they are ours, Father God. Yes. When your word says, love thy neighbor like yourself, Father God, you yes. meant these children, Father God. We must not only focus on our own, Father God, but we should focus on the flocks that are around us and those that we can touch and impact through your gospel, Father God. We ask for your anointing and your power, Father God, to move in these school districts, to God, to move into these um, municipalities, Father God, to move all the way to the White House, Father God, that they will seek a revival towards you, Father God, in your word and claim it as their truth, Father God. May we cast out all of these secular ways of thought, Father God. May we cast them out in the name of Jesus, Father God. May we replace them, Father God, with your word, Father God, that is the only truth, Father God. And we pray these things in your glorious name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And anybody who's watching right now, I want to add to his prayers. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that the Holy Spirit will fill you right now from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Fill them now Father God with the Holy Spirit so they will get boldness Father God to go out right now to do the great commission to lay hands on the sick to cast out devils and to raise the dead Father God I am praying right now like he was saying add to his prayers Father God that we bind any demonic attachments anything that's not of God or the word of God or Jesus Christ of Nazareth that is coming against the people watching right now or our government or our nation or our children or our fathers Father God in the name of Jesus I I bind it and cast it the abyss right now in Jesus' name. Roko Shanta Rakaira Baba. In the name of Jesus, Father. Give them boldness, Lord, right now. Fill them with the Holy Spirit. Infiltrate their heart, Father God. I pray right now, whoever's watching, that you begin to get filled with the presence of Yeshua, of Jesus. That you wake up tomorrow morning, right now, as we're praying, with a boldness and a hunger to go after God, to go after the Word of God, to begin to read the Word and get revelation. Get taught like Paul did from the Holy Spirit and begin to apply it to your life. Apply it to all areas of your life and get the unfair advantage because that's what it is. It's the cross. It's Jesus. Father, we thank you for this prayer. We thank you for this, this, for what you did, for what you gave for us. We know it's all you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. I call it agreement. Yeah, man. We got to go to a commercial right now, guys. This is powerful, but when we come back, we'll hear more from Jack. See you soon. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 19, Jesus said, If any two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father who is in heaven. The prayer of agreement is our most powerful tool for creating changes. Has it been hard for you to get traction in one specific area of your life? Has moving forward felt impossible? Are you struggling in your mind with fearful imaginations? Depression? financial concerns? Has someone caused you hurt that you feel like you will never recover from? Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 says, Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. We are a ministry of prayer. Robbie wants to pray for you right now. Go to our website, click the button for prayer. It's free. Robbie will pray for you immediately. 
We're back with Jack Brewer, former NFL player with a heart for Christ and a passion for bringing people into the kingdom. Man, I just, I, you know, sitting here talking to you and like, what a powerful, I feel the Holy Spirit here. But I was thinking about your, your ministry and your foundation. And one of the main things you talk about is the global, your global, your global pr prison ministry, man. I want to hear about that. Yeah, man. You know, God, uh, when God got a hold of me, man, um, <clears throat> it just completely changed my life. You know, I started my foundation when I was really in the world. You know, I, yeah. I you know, I got, you know, God blesses us with anointings, but we can use our anointings for good or bad. That's right, man. You know, and so um, I always serve people. I always help people. I was, I've been a servant my entire life, yeah. um, but I didn't have his name on it. Right, and yeah. so once I put his name on it, things just really start opening up, man. Yeah. And uh, I had an infrastructure built out. Um, I started to do a lot of work in Africa. Right. I had a passion for, for Africa and, you know, reading the word uh, and understanding that he wants us to, to really reach out to the poorest of the poor, the, the least of these. Right. right? And so uh, I went over to Malawi, man, uh, almost 18 years ago. Uh, and saw the poorest people I've ever seen, little babies drinking water out, out of the, the, the puddles and just dirty water. And, and, you know, I picked up a little girl one day, she was dying from malnutrition, we, you know, rushed her to the hospital and, and, and all of these, I mean, this is the type of population that we're talking about. And so um, as we expanded, you know, we got up to about 50 orphan care centers where we feed about 5,000 people uh, a year. Yeah. And then God told me, to go into the prisons. Amen. And once I um, witnessed what they were doing in the prisons and how bad it was, women in the prison, little babies being born in the prison, and when they're born, they live in the prison with the mom. Yeah. And, you know, no water half the time, no clean water, no food, going days without eating, piling on top of each other. I had to do something, man. And so, um, you know, God put it on my heart and we started our prison ministry. We started um, distributing Bibles. You know, in a place like Malawi, Bibles cost about ten dollars well the average salary is less than a dollar a day Jeez. so you, you can only imagine someone like a prisoner would never be able to get access to the word of god and so the bible tells us that you know that's the great commission man we, we gotta spread the gospel to every right. nation right. right and then the end shall come and so we're, we're a little ways away from that and i saw that uh in malawi and so i just start pouring in pouring in pouring in man and um last year um, Free Chapel Church, uh, Pastor Franklin, I, I, I say thank you again, gave us a, a, a donation to sponsor that prison ministry mm -hmm. for an entire year. And so it's like, man, I, I, I know we're doing what God wants us mm -hmm. to do, um, but it's one of those things that, you know, sometimes you got to take, take time to step outside of your world, mm -hmm. right? Stick to the gospel. And if God puts something in your life uh, to help someone you will never meet, never see, never Ever run into that's kingdom work. <laughs> Amen, man. Hey, when you're when you talk, I think about that, man, because it's um, everything I do, man, is it's kingdom, bro. Oh, yeah. From tithing, sowing seeds, anything I do at all times, man, it's kingdom. What's moving the kingdom? And God blesses that, man. That's what His Word Amen. says. He blesses it. A word that He says does not come back void, and that He's not a man that shall lie. I say it all the time, man. If it doesn't, let's take the Bible up and let's close it. Right. Because it's not. Because that means the whole gospel is is a lie. That means a death burial, and then it, we know it ain't. We know it ain't. So all those things come back. So it's and like those are wonder signs and miracles. Amen. So we gotta understand that <laughs> yeah. we we gotta give God yeah, the glory. Amen, bro. It, we Sometimes we start to believe yeah, yeah. that the things that are happening in our lives have anything to do with us. Nothing to do with us, man. Believe me, kingdom work is, has nothing to do with you. Jesus. If you feel like something is benefiting you and is something helping you, it's probably not for the kingdom. Amen. Kingdom work is much bigger than you. It'll You'll feel the Holy Spirit. That's right. Right? And, 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 and it's, it's faith, really. Amen. You can't do kingdom work without having faith in God. Amen. And Sometimes we forget that, man. Yeah. And, and, and when we see wonder signs and miracles, we have to acknowledge them Brilliant. in the spirit for what they are. And things happen good in your life all the time. Yeah. Give God the glory. <laughs> Give him the glory, the honor and the praise. When you see something happen, yeah. don't sit back like like you did it. Yeah. Don't sit back like your mind thought of it. Yeah. Right. 
We can't comprehend the power right. of God. And so I just encourage everybody listening to give God his glory mm-hmm. when you see it happening in your life. Because all of us, no matter if we're having a bad day, uh, God done showed us the wonder signs and miracles. Right, bro. It's funny. I was, uh, I'm, I'm laughing because like sometimes I'll laugh. Or I'll either laugh or cry when the Holy Spirit is in. But me, my, I was talking to my wife earlier today, and we're just some things we were talking about. And she was saying that exact same thing, man. Like it's just, man, I give God the glory glory on everything you know i got a big ac company bro from little tiny jobs to big jobs mm-hmm. every day man i'm like thank you lord i hit my knees multiple times i'm not, I'm not saying it's trying to be holier than that i'm just saying amen. i give god the glory amen. i'll go amen. in that bathroom hit my knees i'll go in there you know, little jobs i say father i thank you so much i just thank him for every little move because i know every single move that is made even though it's god wants he's in the big things he's in the small things he's in everything man and when you glorify him and give him the glory bro that's what it's all about and then other people see that and it begins yeah. to minister to their life because right. people see man that you're the light you're the salt they see your life man and, and your life begins to minister to them man oh, because it's just like man look at this dude's life look what he's done and 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 i you know you're talking about the prison stuff man god has given me multiple words man we got some hard times coming up man Amen. mentally physically spiritually financially i wrote it down but for the remnant mm-hmm. it's not going to be that way mm-hmm. and the only reason why God is going to prosper us during these times is for his glory. glory. He's going to prosper us mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. When people are in so much pain, and it ain't for us. Don't get, don't get me wrong. We're grafted in sons, and he's blessing us because he does love blessing us, Amen. but it ain't for that. Right. And so that other people see in these crazy hard times, how is this man shining with a light on him? How is he prospering in his business, in his job, over here? He's light. He's praying. Like, what's going on during these hard times? And we're going to tell them, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Glory to God. You know what I'm saying? That's why. That's the why. gospel, the cross, the death, burial, and resurrection. And we're going to use that time to evangelize and to grab that hand and to save them and rob hell, man. That's what's going on. That's exactly what happened. And I know part of your other ministry is uh, the second chance, right? That's right. Tell, Tell me a little, little bit about, about that. that. That's, that's, that's everything you're saying. I'm just thinking about planting seeds Amen. and letting Amen. God give the increase. <laughs> Plant <laughs> seeds and let God yeah. give the increase. Yeah, God can only give you his grace through your faith. Amen, bro. The reason I go into the prisons and the reason I work so hard on second chances is because not, not because... I want fame or fortune for it, but I know where the broken of the broken are. And when I'm around the broken of the broken, I feel like I'm closer to God. Amen, bro. Their prayers, their anointing that comes on you when you're around men who have fully surrendered to Christ (sighs) is something that you can hardly describe. (laughs) And so what's ended up happening to me is I used to hang around all professional football players, what the world would call successful. That's all I used to hang around all the time. Now, all of a sudden, I hang around nothing but guys out of prison. I can't get enough of them. They pray over me. They pray for me. They work with me. We serve the Lord together. That's powerful. And I understand why Jesus went around and got a bunch of what the world would say misfits and said, follow me. I understand. That's right. Because once you get a man that's been broken, that's fully redeemed by the blood of Jesus, (laughs) there's nothing you can do. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. And so that's what really powers our our, our second chance programs, man. And, and, And I'll and I'll also say this. Amen. It's gotten to a point now where our youth ministry mm-hmm. and our second chance ministry Amen. has become one. Amen. So 80% of, of our mentors and guys that uplift our kids and pick them up and take them to school and do that are guys that have transitioned from the prison, man. Amen, and it's just a beautiful thing to see the power of God work. Amen. And anybody that witnesses it feels the Holy Spirit. And it, it's a blessing. Dude, when you're talking about that, my so my AC company, we have Unfair Advantage Ministries, but my AC company is my minister too. I hire dudes straight out of prison, put them through school. If you look up our AC company, I got 400 reviews, five stars, not one bad review. And the thing is, is they're like gladiators, bro. Once you get a man with a grateful heart and you give him a second chance, bro, he's unstoppable. And you talk about that anointing that because the Bible talks about much forgiving, much love. That's why. And to add to your second chance and your whole ministry, because I know we don't have a lot of time bro 
One of the things God told me too is the revival is coming from the ex-cons, bro. Ex-cons, ex-drug addicts and alcoholics, because bro, the J Jesus raises up the underdogs, bro. Right. That's what he did. If you look like you were talking about all those men, it was people you would never expect, bro, because you get down with that faith when you've been down there, you've been in those places, you have that faith, and faith is what moves mountains. That's where the healing comes from, the faith in Jesus, and that's where the signs, wonders, and all that stuff comes from, from those men's faith who've been down so low in the hood, in the trenches, drug addict, dying. I mean, I came out my body and was hit with defibrillator patterns, bro. Mm. I was so bad on drugs. I see myself. So being through those things now, that's why to God to pull me out of such a rut out of a hole, yeah. bro, it's like, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's why, man, and I had the same you know, I have the same love that you do. I go into prisons now, man, and I bring, I'm, you know, I'm also part of a 12-step program, and I go in there, and but I'm soon going to be going in there, I think, next month for the first time to preach the gospel, bro. Glory to God. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get it in, bro. Well, you can come anytime. I'm telling you, I have prisons all over the country. Yeah. It would be an honor to have you, brother. Yeah. Um, we have second chance centers inside the prison walls, um, and, and I want I want you to come to some prisons with me, bro. Uh, you if, you, me. if 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 you would be so willing, I'm man. There. And and as you're speaking, man, I'm I'm just thinking about God. Just put something on my heart to talk to everybody about sin. Amen. Understand that. Sin and repentance. Yes, we don't sometimes talk about it enough, Amen. but we must flee from sin and pursue righteousness. Amen, repent today, right now, repent. There's something on your heart you know you've been holding back yeah. on. There's something on your heart that you know um, that you yeah, need bro. to address spiritually. Yeah. I'm not talking about in the flesh. No one, no one physically probably even saw it, but between you and God, there's something that you need to be real about. You go back and attack every single soul tie that you have, everything that you know that you need to repent for. Yeah. Make today that day that you repent. Don't start praying over people when you have all this baggage. <laughs> Don't lay your hands on people when you got all this baggage. Don't even get your family in the car and go into church and take them up in church right, when you got all this baggage. Right, the Bible says right. the prayers of the righteous Hallelujah. availeth much. <laughs> Hallelujah. So don't pray over people unless yeah. you're ready. Amen, man. But we have a God that made it easy for us. Amen. We have a God of salvation. God made it really easy for us. Repenting and giving your heart to him. Amen. And I claim that right now in, in the name, in of, name Jesus. of Jesus. Hallelujah, bro. Glory to God, bro. bro I want to I wanna pray, man. Please. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for your ministry. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you for the man of God right here. I thank you for what he... <laughs> Father, fill him with more. Give him more anointing. Give him more of you, Father. Help him free more captives, Father. Help him save more souls. Give him more of you, Father. I thank you for the man of God. I pray for edge of protection around him and his wife and his life, Father. And I just pray that you bring more, just more of you everywhere, Father, that he can break more chains. He's a soldier. <laughs> Father, mental him. Give him more, Lord. We're in bad times, Father. I pray that people just begin to come up to him and the anointing on him just begins to break yokes. He don't even got to talk. Then when he talks, he gets more, Father. I pray for more souls, more repentance, more salvation, Father. Father, fill him with the Holy Spirit. Shakarabaroko. Fill him more of you, Father. Give him hands to heal people, Father God. He can lay his hands on the sick and they'll be healed. To cast demons, Father. More boldness. Bring the resources, Father, in his life to bring his life together even more. Bring the people that he needs in his life from the north, south, east, and the west, Father God, to make his ministry even stronger, more powerful, to save souls, Father. We know the end of this book. And we thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, bro. Amen, bro. Thank you, bro. Amen, man. Guys, this is a... Uh... If you're not born again, if you don't have Jesus in your life, you need to get him immediately. Please hear me right now. I don't understand. You need to get him now, fast. Repent for your sins. Repeat after me. Father, I believe you gave your only begotten son. 
that you died on the cross for me. And he was buried. And he rose from the dead. And Father, I make him my Lord and Savior in all my life. And he washes away all my sins now. And I will move for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Guys, it's been a good show. I'll see you next time on The Unfair Advantage. Okay, guys, hear me out. I want to tell you what God's unfair advantage anointing truly is. I received the unfair advantage anointing on the cold floor of my jail cell. I was immediately delivered from drug addiction. I immediately experienced God's divine favor. God reduced my federal prison sentence from 25 years to two years. I had four DUIs, which meant in the natural, I would never have a driver's license again. It was taken for the rest of my life. God supernaturally provided a driver's license. I started an air conditioning company. Today, God has provided me with over 23 trucks. Last year, my, my company did over $5 million. Through God's unfair advantage anointing, I can pray for the sick and cast out devils, just like Jesus said we could. Anxiety, depression, anything goes. God gave me the resources to help you guys get this thing. You can have divine health, supernatural provision, boldness like Apostle Paul. You can face others, pray for the sick, cast out devils, and raise the dead. What if I were to tell you that in just 52 days, you could experience the unfair advantage anointing in all areas of your life? It's real. It works. It happens for everybody else. Why not you? Addictions have been broken. Healings have occurred. Emotional pain lifted. Financial turnarounds have begun. Issues that stem from abuse, abandonment, divorce, and other tragedies have been healed and removed forever. There is not a single person that this 52-day experience doesn't work for. Turnarounds have begun for people even before completing the 52 days. Why 52 days? Robbie will answer that question on day one. The answer is amazing. It's worth it because you're worth it. The first step towards change is always the most difficult one. Take that step today. Start now. In less than 60 seconds, you'll be on your way to experiencing the unfair advantage. This is the unfair advantage. No time for the enemy. I can finally see Jesus, you are all I need. Unfair advantage. Praise Jesus. Praise Yeshua. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Everybody has the unfair advantage. You just have to tap in.